When the first and the second generation nuclear power plants were built, they mostly came from the integrated suppliers such as the Westinghouse in each country, who required little from external suppliers. Today, most of the new plant comes from a range of international suppliers and vendors. Companies such as the Westinghouse are focused on design, engineering and project management. There is a demand from the customer for maximum local supply, which often means a high level of technology transfer. Westinghouse readiness to transfer the technology for its AP-1000 to China was a major factor in its selection. The supply chain for the nuclear power project has received more attention in recent years, and the World Nuclear Association supply chain reported realized in January 2015 documents the situation through the 2030. Over this period, as they anticipated, the nuclear power plant construction and the refurbishment project for long-term operation could be worth 30 billion per year. Its referred scenario envisaged the start of the 266 new reactors by 2030, with an investment of some 1,200 billion US dollars and a closer of 118 reactors, mostly in Europe and Japan. The report also looks at the common scene which a cost of the 95 billion US dollars of the later total. Managing the quality and capability challenges along the supply chain is crucial to securing a reliable and efficient international supplier base. In Europe and in North America, capability to manufacture safety-related components and systems has been eroded with a scarcity in new nuclear project since the 1980s. While in engineering industrial countries, vendors must upgrade to meet the training requirements expected in the nuclear industry. For very large generation 3 plus reactors, production of the pressure vessel requires or is the best undertaken by forging presses of about 140 up to 150 million tons, capacity which except hot steel ingots of the 500 to 600 tons. They are not common and individual large presses do not have high throw output. About four pressure vessels per year appears to be common at the present, fitted it with other work, though the potential is greater than this. Westinghouse was constrained upon 2009 that the AP-1000 pressure vessel closure and the three complex steam generator parts can only be made by GSW. Arriva has a little more choice. Reactor vendors prefer large floor material and single products, but it is possible to use split forges which are welded together. These welds then need checking through the life of the plant. Also, the last generation second reactor line requires some 2,000 tons of forgings. EPR and AP-1000 units require about twice the amount. Westinghouse says the minimum requirements of making the largest AP-1000 component is about 15,000 tons per stake in 350 tons ingots.
там что-то варят, блин. в одном этом самом In modern nuclear power plants, the overall thermal efficiency is about one third. So, 30,000 megawatts of thermal power from the fusion reaction is needed to generate 1,000 megawatt of electrical power. The reason is in a relatively low steam temperature. Increasing the temperature of the steam can attain higher efficiency, whether it requires an increase in pressure inside boilers of steam generations. However, metallurgical consideration place an upper limit on such pressures. In comparison to other energy sources, the thermal efficiency of 33% is not much. But it must be noted that nuclear power plants are much more complex than fossil fuel power plants. And it is much easier to burn fossil fuel than to generate energy from the nuclear fuel. Subcritical fossil fuel power plants operating under critical pressure can achieve 36 upon 40% efficiency.
так как пусть. To achieve optimum safety, Nuclear Prime plants in the Western world operate using a defense in depth approach with multiple safety systems supplementing the natural features of the reactor core. Key aspects of the approach are high quality design and construction, equipment which prevents operational disturbances of human failures and errors developing into the problems, comprehensive monitoring and regular testing to detect the equipment of operational failures. Redundant and diverse system to control damage to the fuel and to prevent significant radioactive releases. Provision to confine the effects of the severe fuel damage on the plant itself. This can be summed up as prevention monitoring in action. The safety provisions include a series of the physical barriers between the radioactive reactor's core and the environment, the provision of multiple safety systems, each with a backup and designed to accommodate human error, as well as the physical aspect of the safety their industrial aspect which are no less important. See following section of the internal globalization. The barriers in a typical plant are the fuel is the form of the solid ceramic pellets and radioactive fission products remain largely bound inside these pellets as the fuel is a bird. The pellets are packed inside zealous zirconium alloy tubes to associate primary water cooling pipe work is also substantial. All this, in turn, is enclosed inside a robust significant barrier around the fuel, which itself is stable up to very high temperatures. These barriers are monitored continually, the fuel cladding is monitored by measuring the amount of the radioactivity in the cooling water. The high-pressure cooling system is monitored by the leak rate of the water, and the contaminated structure by periodically measuring the leak rate of air at about 5 times atmospheric pressure.